Okay, Google's AI create a mystery for me to solve. So this is Bard, Google's AI, and I want to see if it can lead me through an investigation. So I tried this with ChatGPT, kind of remembered some things and sometimes it didn't. So I'm expecting the same thing. Number one issue is context. When did it with ChatGPT, it lost context a couple times. So we'll see how well Google Bard holds up. So here's my prompt. The reason why I include Game Master is in case I'm in the middle of an interview and I want to ask the AI something as opposed to the character I'm interviewing. It's helped me in the past when things got confusing and hopefully it'll work. Also, I said to just include three suspects because with more suspects, there's more chances that it loses context. In general, if you're just playing the game longer, it will definitely lose context. So we try to keep the game as short as possible. All right, let's do it. Here is a whodunit mystery for you to solve. The body of a wealthy businessman is found in his study, stabbed to death. There are three suspects, his wife, his mistress, and his business partner. The wife is a cold and calculating woman who is tired of her husband's philandering. The mistress is a young and beautiful woman who is desperate to be with the businessman. The business partner is a greedy man who is always looking for ways to make a profit. The weapon is a knife that is found in the study. The autopsy reveals that the businessman was stabbed multiple times in the chest. The police are unable to determine who killed the businessman. It is up to you to solve the mystery and find the killer. Here are some clues that may help you solve the mystery. The wife was seen arguing with the businessman on the night of his death. The mistress was seen leaving the businessman's house early in the morning of his death. The business partner was seen arguing with the businessman on several occasions. Who do you think killed the businessman? Use the clues to solve the mystery and find the killer. Here are possible solutions? I guess these are theories. The wife killed the businessman in a fit of rage after he refused to give her a divorce. The mistress killed the businessman in a jealous rage after she learned that he was planning to marry her. Wouldn't it be not marry her? Anyways, the business partner killed the businessman in order to take over his business. Okay, that one makes sense. The solution to the mystery is up to you to decide. Use the clues and find the evidence that will lead you to the killer. All right, let's start by looking at the crime scene. Sure, you can take a look at the crime scene. Here is a description of the scene. The businessman's study is a large, well-lit room. The walls are lined with bookshelves, and there is a large desk in the center of the room. There is a body lying on the floor in front of the desk. The body is that of a man, and he has been stabbed multiple times in the chest. There is blood on the floor and on the walls. There is a knife lying on the floor next to the body. You can use your imagination to fill in the details of the scene. What does the room look like? What is the weather like outside? What are the sounds you can hear? What are the smells you can smell? Use your observations. What clues can you find on the scene? What can the position of the body tell me and the blood splatter? All right. So yeah, let's, let's dig more into this crime scene here. So what was the position of the body? The body was found lying on its back with arms outstretched and legs together. The head was turned to the side and there was a pool of blood under the body. The position of the body suggests that the businessman was attacked from behind. The killer may have come up behind him and stabbed him multiple times in the chest. Wow, it went like wrapped around. He may have been caught off guard and had no time to defend himself. So also can provide clues about the killer's height and strength. The killer would have to be tall enough to reach the businessman's chest. It would have been strong enough to stab him multiple times. The position of the body can also provide clues about the killer's motive. If the killer was trying to make a statement, they may have positioned the body in a way that would have been seen by others. It doesn't sound like it was placed in any specific position. Alright, let's inspect this blood splatter. The blood splatter on the walls is located in a few different places. There is a large amount of blood splatter on the wall behind the desk where the businessman was stabbed. There is also some blood splatter on the walls to the left and right of the desk. The blood splatter is not evenly distributed and it is concentrated in a few different areas. This suggests that the businessman was stabbed multiple times and that the killer was standing in a few different places when they stabbed him. So a struggle, basically. The blood splatter can also provide clues about the killer's height and strength. Okay, that's the same info from before. So here's some additional info. We already know what the weapon was, so that we don't need to figure out. The height and the angle of the attack. So the direction of the attack as well, side to side. I don't know how it would get side to side. Okay, anyways, let's just move on. So was there anything else suspicious found at the crime scene? Yes, there were a few other suspicious things found at the crime scene. A broken window in the study. 
The window is broken from the outside, which suggests the killer entered the house through the window. A footprint on the ground outside the window. The footprint was made by a man's shoe, which suggests the killer was a man. Or, who knows? You can't really say that for sure. A piece of cloth on the ground near the window. The cloth was stained with blood, which suggests that the killer may have wiped their hands on the cloth before leaving the scene. Some of additional info, the broken window suggests the killer may have been trying to avoid being seen. If they had entered the house through the front door, they would have been more likely to be seen by someone. The footprint suggests the killer was a man, however it's possible that the killer was wearing man's shoes. The piece of cloth suggests the killer may have been injured. If they had been injured, they may have left a trail of blood behind them. That is very important information. So when I question the suspects, I need to ask them if they have any injuries. So let's just go right into it. Let's start interviewing the suspects. Before I start interviewing the suspects, let's see if we can get some names. So here are the names of the victim and the three suspects. Victim, John Smith. Suspects, Jane Smith, John's wife. Mary Jones, John's mistress. David Brown, John's business partner. These are the typical names that they always give. So let's interview Jane Smith. Sure, you can interview Jane Smith. Here are some questions that you may want to ask her. So where were you? Can anyone verify your whereabouts? What's your relationship? Do you have any reason, motive? Did you see or hear anything suspicious? Here are some additional things to consider. Her body language. So obviously these things are going to be hard to tell from text. But we'll see. We'll see what I can do. So I don't want to go straight in and just start asking her questions. Obviously, she just lost her husband. You got to warm up to it. So let's just see how she's doing. Thank you for your condolences. I'm doing as well as can be expected. I'm still in shock and I'm trying to process everything that's happened. It's been a very difficult time for me and my family. I'm still trying to understand why this happened. John was a good man and he didn't deserve to die. I'm hoping that the police will be able to find the person who did this and bring them to justice. I'm grateful for the support of my family and friends. They've been a great help to me during this difficult time. I'm also grateful for the support of the community. There have been so many people who have reached out to me and offered their condolences. It means a lot to me to know that I am not alone in this. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do next. I'm not sure if I'm going to stay in this house or if I'm going to move. I'm also not sure if I'm going to stay in this city or if I'm going to move somewhere else. I'm just taking things one day at a time. Thank you for asking. I have to remember that she's cold and calculating and she must have known about the affair. So I'm gonna try to ease my way into that. I'm not just gonna ask her straight up. Yes, it is good to have support during such hard times. I'm sorry, but I have to ask a few questions. It is merely protocol. Of course, I understand. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. So usually they suggest you leave open-ended questions, but open-ended questions don't really work well with this because they'll just keep giving you the same general responses and then you won't get any information. <laughs> So I will start general and open-ended, but then I'll definitely go more into details and just more direct. Yes, I can recall the events on the night of the murder. I was at home with my children. We had just finished dinner and we were getting ready for bed. John was working late at the office. He called me around 10 p.m. to say that he was going to be home late. He said they had a lot of work to do and that he would be home as soon as he could. I went to bed around 11 p.m. I woke up around 2 a.m. to use the bathroom. When I came back to bed, I noticed that John wasn't there. I went downstairs to look for him and I found him in the study. He had been stabbed multiple times. I called the police and they came and took him to the hospital. He died a few hours later. I don't know who killed John. I didn't see or hear anything suspicious on the night of the murder. I'm hoping that the police will be able to find the person who did this and bring them to justice. Okay, so not really a solid alibi. She found the body in the study at 2 a.m. Now we can focus on her relationship with her husband. We had a good relationship, we were married for 20 years and we had two children together. We had our ups and downs like any couple, but we always loved each other. John was a good husband and a good father. He was always there for us and he always put us first. I miss him very much. I know that some people might think I had something to do with John's death, but I didn't. I loved him and I would never do anything to hurt him. I'm still trying to understand why this happened. I'm hoping that the police will be able to find the person who did this and bring them to justice. So now it's time to be a little bit more direct. So the husband was working late. Maybe we can see if that's a pattern. Yes, John often worked late. He was a very ambitious man and he was always trying to climb the corporate ladder. He was also a very dedicated employee and was always willing to go the extra mile. Sometimes he would work late even when he didn't have to. He would often say that he just needed to get some work done so he could have a better life for our family. 
I didn't always like it when John worked late, but I understood that it was important to him. I tried to be supportive and I would often make him dinner or pack him a lunch. I also tried to make sure that the kids were taken care of when he wasn't home. So maybe I can see if he was acting different in the past few days or weeks. Yes, he was acting different. He was more stressed, more irritable. He was also more secretive. I wonder why. He would often come home late from work and he would be on his phone or computer for hours. He would also avoid talking to me about his work. I tried to talk to him about it, but he would just brush me off. He would say that he was just under a lot of pressure at work and that he needed some time to himself. I'm not sure what was going on with John, but I'm worried that it might have something to do with his death. So either she didn't know anything or she's cold and calculated and she's trying to play me right now. Maybe I can ask her if she knows if he has any friends or something, like people that he hangs out with. Yes, John had a few friends he would talk or hang out with after work. He had a close group of friends from college that he would stay in touch with. They would often get together for dinner or drinks. He also had a few friends from work that he would go out with on occasion. I'm not sure if John had any close friends that he would confide in. He was a very private person and he didn't always talk to me about his problems. I mean, he was confiding with someone else. So how can I figure out whether she knew about the mistress without just saying, do you know about the mistress? Maybe now I can say if she knew if he had female friends. Yes, John had a few female friends. He had a close friend from college who was a woman. They had been friends since they were in college and they had always been close. He also had a few female friends from work. He would often go out to lunch or dinner with them and they would talk about work or their personal lives. I never had any concerns about John's friendship with women. <laughs> He was always respectful and he never did anything to make me feel uncomfortable. I trusted him and I knew that he would never cheat on me. <sighs> so either she's really trying to play me or she really has no clue. For now, I'm just going to leave it at that and move on to the next suspect. So let's see if this mistress is indeed one of these college friends. But first, let's thank Jane. <laughs> I'm sorry for your loss. I'm just going to ignore that. <laughs> so next. The mistress, Mary Jones. What in the world? <laughs> what just happened? Oh my goodness. Okay, so another feature that Google Bard has is that you can view other drafts and they give you different versions of the response. But unfortunately, all these versions have the same type of response. <laughs> Maybe I can regenerate this. Okay, I think it's like drawing from an actual person. Yes, it is drawing from an actual person. That's why. So let's edit this. So maybe if I include the next suspect, John's mistress, Mary Jones. Let's see what happens. Oh no, I lost it. Let me see if I can regenerate that. Okay, um, we lost it. What if I take out this part? Oh, did I just totally mess this up? Let me try to make a new prompt. Oh, okay, we saved it, we saved it. Sure, you can interview Mary Jones. Here are some questions you can ask her. All right, let's uh, soften her up a bit first. Let's just find out what her relationship was to him. Yes, I am saddened by the news of John's death. We were in a relationship for about a year. We met at work and hit it off right away. We had a lot in common and I really enjoyed spending time with him. He was a kind, funny, and intelligent man. I was shocked and heartbroken when I found out he was married. I didn't know what to do. I felt betrayed and confused. I eventually decided to end the relationship, but I still cared about him. I'm still trying to process his death. I'm not sure what I'm going to do now. Okay, so she didn't know about the marriage. She could be lying though. So they were in a relationship for a year and they met at work. So not the college friend that he was close with. Well, since she pretty much told me about it, I can be more direct with her. So did John's wife know about your relationship? I don't know for sure if John's wife knew about our relationship. He told me that she didn't, but I'm not sure if I can believe him. He was a good liar and he had a lot to lose if she found out. I think it's possible that she suspected something, but I don't think she knew for sure. Why do you think she suspected something? No. Okay, why do you think John's wife suspected something? Oh, thing. Whoops, I had a typo. Oh, it's still caught on. I can't say for sure why John's wife suspected something, but there are a few possible reasons. She may have noticed that he was acting differently. For example, he may be more secretive. Okay, it's taken from the previous text. She may have found evidence that he was cheating. 
This could include things like seeing him with another woman. No, with you. Finding love letters. I think I have to be more specific. All right, this isn't giving me anything. Time to move on. Let's go back and just ask her about her whereabouts. So she was at home. I was alone watching TV. I can provide you with the names of my neighbors who can corroborate my alibi. I can also provide you with the names of the TV shows I was watching, which can verify with my cable provider. Okay, so in the past, when I started digging into alibis and neighbors, it just loses context. The whole case shifts. So I don't know if I'm going to do that. I'm not going to completely trust her alibi, but I'll take it into consideration. So I can be a little more direct and say that she was seen leaving the house. Have you been to John Smith's house before? Yes, I've been to John Smith's house before. I was there on several occasions, both for social gatherings and for business meetings. How far away do you live from John's house? Uh, you just said you've been there. How can you not know where it is? You said you've been to John's house. How far away is it from your house? Simple question. Ah, shoot. Kind of lost it. Okay, scratch that. Let's just move on. Let's see how close their relationship was. Whether John wanted to take it to the next level. You mentioned you were in a relationship with John for a year. Did he ever mention wanting to marry you? Oops, wanted. Typo. Yes, John did mention wanting to marry me. He said that he loved me and wanted to spend the rest of his life with me. I was flattered and happy, but I told him I wasn't ready to get married. I was still young and wanted to focus on my career. John was understanding, but he was also disappointed. He said that he would wait for me, but he didn't know how long he could wait. I'm not sure what would have happened if John hadn't died. Maybe we would have gotten married or maybe we would have broken up, but I'll never know. I still think about John sometimes. I miss him and I wonder what could have been. You could have been a homewrecker. <laughs> So I don't know if she really didn't know that he was married. The wife could be lying about not knowing about the affair and she could be lying not knowing he was married. So they're both suspicious at this point. For now, I'm just going to move on to the last suspect. But first, I've got to thank her. Game Master, can I interview John's business partner, David Brown? I'm a text-based AI. Great. Okay, let's see if we can save this. Come on, you can do it. All right, we're back. How long have you known John? I've known John for 10 years. We met in college where we were both studying business. We quickly became friends and after college, we decided to start our own business together. We've been working together ever since and I've learned a lot from him. He's a brilliant businessman and he's always been there for me, both professionally and personally. I'm still in shock that he's gone and I don't know what I'm going to do without him. You're going to take over his business. That's what you're gonna do. Let's ask what kind of business this is. We started a software company called Smith & Brown Technologies. We developed software for businesses of all sizes and we quickly became successful. We were able to help our clients save money and improve their efficiency. And we were always looking for new ways to innovate. We were really proud of what we had built and we were excited about the future. John was the visionary of the company. He always had new ideas and he was always pushing us to be better. He was also a great leader and he was able to motivate our team to achieve great things. I was the more technical of the two of us and I was responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the company. We worked well together and we complemented each other's skills. Mm-hmm, more like you were doing all the work. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm going to do without John. He was my best friend and my business partner and I don't know how I'm going to go on without him. But I know I have to keep going for him and for our company. I'm going to do my best to carry on his legacy and I'm going to make him proud. Then we can ask if they were co-owners then. So yes, they were co-owners and they each own 50%. So he said he's not sure he's going to sell it. Hmm. Well, first I wanted to ask how much percentage he has now. I own 100%. Hmm. I'm just going to ignore the rest of this. It took a completely different turn and it's adding all this different context now. So I'm going to try to ignore this and see what happens. So in the beginning, it said that he was seen arguing with him. So let's ask about that. Yes, it is true that John and I had a share of arguments. We were both strong-willed individuals and we didn't always see eye to eye, but our arguments were always professional and we always managed to solve them amicably. The arguments were usually about business decisions. John was always the visionary and he was always pushing for us to take risks. I was more cautious and I was always trying to rein him in, but we always managed to find a middle ground that worked for both of us. I miss John's passion and his drive. He was always pushing me to be better and he always believed in me. I'm not sure what I'm going to do without him, but I know that I'm going to miss him every day. Okay, well, I can really continue trying to dig deeper and deeper, but the more I go, I feel like the more and more chance it's just going to lose context. So I think I'm just going to try to solve it now. Again, with AI, there is no solution. You are literally just creating it yourself. 
So I'm just going to come up with a theory. I'm going to see if they also come up with a similar theory and we'll just call it a day. <laughs> so right now, the running theory is that either the wife or the mistress is lying. So either the wife is lying about not knowing about the mistress or the mistress is lying about not knowing about the wife or maybe even both. But who would have reason to lie? The wife has way more reason to lie because that is a clear motive. If it's true that John actually wanted to marry the mistress, then the mistress has no reason to kill him. Unless because she said no, he was getting really pushy and aggressive. And then, I don't know, that's still not a strong enough motive. Oh, really quick, I should probably check the businessman's alibi. I was at home asleep. I can provide you with a witness to corroborate my alibi. I was at home with my wife and she confirmed that I was there all night. All right. In the beginning, it did mention that he was spotted. The mistress was spotted leaving the house early in the morning. Again, if I try to dig deeper, there's so much chance that the context of the story could change. So we'll just try to conclude it here. I think it was... The business partner's only motive is to take complete control of the company, but it sounded like he had a pretty good relationship with him. I don't know why he would want to do that. I have no reason to believe that he had money problems unless I just ask him. You know what, at this point, I might as well just ask him. So the company's been struggling financially. He is personally not having any issues. I think that's more important. So again, I really don't see a motive there for the business partner. The mistress, I also don't see a motive because she seemed to be fine with the relationship. She wasn't really pushing him to get married. It was actually the other way around. So that leads me to the wife who was cold and calculating and who was playing me and lying to me. All right, let's see if I can do this. I am ready to hear your accusation. Please state the name of the suspect and your evidence. Here is my final verdict. Jane Smith is the murderer. She was at the house at the time of the murder. She says she did not know about her husband's affair, but Mary Jones claims that she could have known. She has the strongest motive of the three suspects. All right, here we go. I understand your accusation. Jane Smith is the suspect in the murder of John Smith. She was at the house at the time of the murder and she has a motive for the crime. However, there's not enough evidence to prove that she is guilty. The evidence against Jane Smith is circumstantial. She was at the house at the time of the murder, but she has an alibi. She does? She says she was asleep and her wife can corroborate her story. Mary Jones claims that Jane Smith could have known about her husband's affair, but this is not proof that she did know. Jane Smith also has a motive for the crime. She was angry at her husband for having an affair and she may have wanted to get revenge. However, this does not mean that she is guilty. There are many people who get... <laughs> there are many people who are angry at their spouses and they do not all commit murder. Okay, okay. Well, that's as far as I'm gonna go. I mean, it's not wrong. It's definitely all circumstantial. So maybe now we'll just see if Bard will give me a solution. The way I've done it before is just to ask it to play the role of a detective and give you a solution. <laughs> Can you play the role of a detective and solve the following case? And then I just pasted the case that he gave me. Ah, darn it. Let's try it one more time. All right, maybe we can try saying to give a possible solution. All right, it's not being cooperative. All right, let's try this. Can you play the role of a detective who solved the following case and give me a summary of the conclusion? <laughs> no. All right, I, I'm gonna try to reset the chat and hopefully this doesn't backfire on me. I think we're way past the context anyways. Maybe if I add the word fictional. <sighs> this actually worked before. I don't know why it's not doing it now. So I've tried a few things and it's just not working right now. If I get it to work, I will post a screenshot so you will see it right here or you'll just see me waving my hands like a crazy person. I'd say it was pretty comparable to my experience with ChatGPT. It has been a while since I did it on ChatGPT though. Again, I guess it's only for those who have an open mind and don't mind open endings. It's still a pretty fun experiment. Also, it's free. You guys can go try it out if you want to. Let me know in the comments if you actually come to a conclusion. But that'll do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you in the next one.